All right, let's do some example problems with complex exponentials. Our first problem is this. Use complex exponentials to find a and phi in the equation below. So basically what this is saying is I've got two sine waves and I'm adding them together and I, I want to see what I get. Because these two sine waves have the same frequency, when I add them together, I, could get, I should get a sine wave at that same frequency. But because the amplitudes of the two sine waves I'm adding together are different and the phases are different, um, this is a little more complicated, all right? But my goal is to find the amplitude and the phase of the wave I get when I add these two waves together. This is really tricky to do using trig identities and such. But it's not too bad if we use complex exponentials. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to first write a complex exponential version of this equation. So I'll start by writing this side as a e to the i omega t plus phi. This is not equal to that, but the imaginary part of this is equal to that. All right, so I'm going to write this equation. In the end, I know I'm just taking the imaginary part. All right, and that's going to be equal to this thing written as complex exponentials. So that's going to be, uh, let's not put in numbers. I hate putting in numbers because then you drop things and mess things up. So I'll call this B, I'll call this C, I'll call this phase shift alpha, I'll call this phase shift beta. All right, so beta is equal to minus. 0.2 and alpha is equal to plus 0.6. All right, so this is going to be b times e to the i omega t plus alpha plus c e to the i omega t plus beta. Once again, this is not equal to that, but the imaginary part is equal to that. All right, so if, if this equation is true and I use it and I find a and phi, it'll be the same a and phi I would find by solving that equation. All right, so let's work with our complex exponential equation. On the left-hand side, notice I can, nice thing about complex exponentials is I have the sum here, I can turn it into a product of two complex exponentials. So I can write this as a e to the i phi e to the i omega t, right? And just split those two out. On the right-hand side, I can do something similar. b times e to the i omega t e to the i alpha plus c e to the i omega t e to the i beta, and I can factor out the e to the i omega t here. So this is just b e to the i alpha plus c e to the i beta, all times e to the i omega t. All right, so if I look at this, this is just this right here. So I've, I'm able to get rid of the e to the i omega t part. I don't need that anymore, all right? And I'm just left with this. But this right here is this, right? This is just a complex number, right? This is the magnitude of the complex number and this is the phase of that complex number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna combine these things together and I'm gonna call that my complex a amplitude, A tilde, all right? And I can easily find that. I just plug numbers in here and get it, right? Now once I have A tilde, I can find A and phi, right? Because the magnitude of A tilde is equal to A. But the magnitude is just the square root of the real part of a tilde squared plus the imaginary part of a tilde squared. I take the square root of that. And I'm going to define the real and imaginary parts. I'm just going to call them a and b, right? So this is a squared plus b squared. So little a and little b are the real and imaginary parts of a tilde. And once I have those, I can find the magnitude a. How do I find the phase? Well, remember, if I plot a tilde in the complex plane, let's say it's over here, right? This is the magnitude right there, and this is the phase angle right there, right? This is the real component here, this is the imaginary component. So the tangent of phi is just gonna be equal to b over a. So I can find phi by taking the inverse tangent, the arc tangent of b over a, all right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to find a and b. So the real part of a tilde is a, but if you look at this, right, it's just the real part of a tilde is just the real part of this plus the real part of this, and I can use Euler's formula. B is a real number, so I just take b times the real part of this, which is just cosine alpha, c times the real part of this, which is just cosine of beta. So the real part of a tilde, of our complex amplitude, is just b cosine alpha plus c sine beta, right? Cosine of alpha, sine of beta. And if I plug those numbers in, it turns out that my real part turns out to be negative 6.529 dot dot dot, all right? 
And the imaginary part then is just B sine of alpha plus C, dang it, that's supposed to be a cosine there, sorry about that, sine of beta. I had you really confused, didn't I? Cosine gives you the real part of a complex exponential and sine gives you the imaginary part. All right, if I plug those in, I'm keeping you on your toes here, right? Negative 5.81256 dot dot dot. Anyway, so I get the real and imaginary parts. And then the amplitude then is just the square root of a squared plus b squared. If you plug that in, you find then that the amplitude of your sum wave is just 8.7 dot dot dot. All right, and when I do my, find my phase shift, that's just the arc tangent of b over a, and you plug that into your calculator and you get 0 0.727372 dot dot dot. All right, so now I have the amplitude and phase, I just have to, you know, plug that in, and I've got my sum. I add the two sine waves and this is the sine wave I get. Now we're not going to stop right here, right? Even, if, even though that's all the, the problem asked me to do was to find that, right? Because I'm going to check my work. I mean, I can use units checking and such. Um, there really aren't any units in either of these, so everything is fine. I can see if it sort of makes sense and whatnot. But I can actually check this answer because I know what I'm supposed to get. I'm supposed to get the sum of those two sine waves. I can just go into Mathematica or Python or MATLAB and plot the sum of those two sine waves. And then I can plot this and see if I get the same thing. So let's do that. I actually already did it, and here's what I got. The blue line is what I get when I sum those two sine waves in Python. And then the green is what I get you, you know, using that amplitude and phase I found with my complex exponentials. And you see they don't line up. There's a problem. What was the problem? Any guesses? Think about this. Let me give you a second. Okay, now I'm going to tell you. Look at what we got for our real and imaginary parts. They're both negative. So that means our a tilde is over in this quadrant over here, right? But the angle we got, 0.72, that's over in this quadrant, right? It's somewhere between 0 and pi over 2, all right? So we got an angle over here, but our actual complex amplitude is over in this quadrant of the complex plane here. The problem is when you take the tangent of this over this, if you take the negative of both of those and take the tangent of this over this, you get the same thing, right? Tangent is multi-valued. So when you do the inverse tangent, your calculator doesn't know which of these two to give you. So you have to figure it out yourself. Once you get that inverse tangent, you look and you say, did it give me the correct quadrant? If it didn't, you need to add or subtract pi to get it in the correct quadrant. So if I subtract pi from that, then I get the correct phase angle, which is negative 2.5. 414221 dot 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 right and it doesn't matter whether I add pi or subtract pi I'm gonna get you know this is the same angle as that right going positive this way is the same as going negative that way so you can either add or subtract pi to get you into the correct quadrant then we have it so let's take that corrected phase and let's plot that now so here is our original plot where we had the wrong quadrant for our phase angle phi if I fix that I get this and now my answer is what it should be, and I'm confident that I did this right. Okay, next problem. Find a solution to the differential equation below. Here, sigma is a constant. All right, so uh, I just, the point of this is, and the point of the homework problem that it's emulating is just to give you some familiarity with solving uh, differential equations, because we're going to see them a bit in this class. All right, with, in particular, we're gonna play with the wave equation, and I want you to be comfortable when we get with, with differential equations when we get to it. All right, now, most of you have probably not taken a class on how to solve differential equations, but the ones we're going to use in this class, either I'm going to give you a hint to help you solve it, or just give you the solution, or they're going to be ones like this one where you can look at it and just use some intuition to figure out what the solution ought to be, or what a solution ought to be, and then we'll see if we can find it. It turns out differential equations can have multiple solutions, and we'll talk about that later when we talk about the wave equation. But let's just see if we can find a solution to this differential equation, all right? So we look at this and we say, hmm, what, is this, what does this equation tell me? It says that if I take the third derivative of x with respect to time, I just get x back times a constant. What can I take three derivatives of and get the same thing back times a constant? Well, it turns out, complex, or not a complex exponential, just an exponential in general, right? 
So it turns out in this problem, our solution won't be complex. But let's just say x is equal to a e to the alpha t. All right, so I'm going to assume some exponential. If I take three derivatives of this, I get the same thing back times a constant. But before we move on, I just want to address something. What if we had said that x is equal to a e to the alpha t plus beta? Would this work? Well, once again, if I take three derivatives of this, having the beta here doesn't really make a difference, right? It'll still work. So this is maybe a more general solution, right? Or maybe I should use this one instead of this one so I don't miss out on some stuff that may be important later. But notice, I can write this as a e to the alpha t times e to the beta. Ah, this is just, if beta is a constant, this is just a constant. Why don't I combine it with this constant? And it really turns out putting that plus beta didn't really give us anything. When we solve equations, you can solve the sines and cosines that end up using complex exponentials. We get that same kind of thing, that I don't have to have this extra phase term tagging along, because I can absorb it into the constant in front. That makes life a little bit easier, along with all the other things complex exponentials do to make things a lot easier. All right, so let's just try this solution right here. How do I know if this is a solution to that equation? Well, I plug it in, and I try it out and see if it works. All right, so I need the third derivative of this. If I take three derivatives of x with respect to time, dots over a variable oftentimes are used to represent time derivatives. So the x with three dots means the third derivative with respect to time. Each time I take a derivative with respect to time, nothing changes except an alpha comes down. So after I take three of them, I'm gonna have alpha cubed a e to the alpha t, all right? So I plug that into my equation. The third derivative is alpha cubed a e to the alpha t is equal to sigma times x, which is just a e to the alpha t. And notice x cancels out, all right? And I'm just left with alpha cubed equals sigma, or sigma equals the cubed root of alpha. All right? Now notice, I could have, once you get familiar with this, you'll start doing shorthand stuff, and you'll be like, oh, x, the third derivative of x with respect to time, that's just alpha cubed times x, because x is all that stuff. Why write all that stuff when I can just write x, right? And on the other side, I have sigma x, and then x is cancel out, and I'm left with the same thing, alpha cubed equals sigma, all right? So anyway, I plug this in, and it works as long as sigma, sorry, as long as alpha is equal to the cubed root of sigma. Sorry, I'm making lots of mistakes today, keeping you on your toes. All right, so this is not a solution to this equation unless alpha is something particular, right? If I just plug in any value for alpha, it won't satisfy this equation. But if alpha is equal to the cubed root of sigma, then this is a solution. So we have a solution, and it looks like this. A e to the sigma to the one-third, the cubed root of sigma times t, and that's a solution to this equation.